Good afternoon. We'd like to welcome you to the Fiscal Health webinar, which provides a briefing to the HRSA HAB project officers on the Fiscal Health Cooperative Agreement. My name is Brian Huddage. I'm the Principal Investigator for the Fiscal Health from Systems to Sustainability Program and also the Executive Director at Health HIV. And we're pleased to have this opportunity to provide an overview to the project officers of this Fiscal Health Program. The webinar today will cover four areas, the purpose of the program, the structure including our national, regional, and local reach, the tactics engaged in the program and highlighting the training and technical assistance offered, and the contacts including the process to make requests for training and TA. The program's purpose is to help ensure the fiscal sustainability of Ryan White funded grantees. With the landscape uh, as a backdrop to the program design and need, we look of course at the Affordable Care Act, and the National HIV AIDS Strategy, HRSA's strategic plan, and other developments that are driving these rapid changes in HIV care service delivery and in payment reform and technology utilization. We also want to pay attention to the HIV care continuum and the shifting focus to integrating core medical care to include care completion services for people living with HIV AIDS. So with that in mind, we'd like to provide an overview of the program structure and I'll turn it over to our project director, Michael Shankel. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is, uh, as Brian had indicated, Michael Schenkel, and I'm the, the Director of Capacity Building with Health HIV and the Program Director um, for the Fiscal Health Program. Um, the diagram that you're looking at on the screen basically shows the uh, program structure um, of the Fiscal Health Program. And there are three tactics that are utilized to disseminate um, TA information, and that is through distance learning, group level training, and individual technical assistance. And we, as we go through the presentation today, we will be detailing each of these particular uh, tactics and discussing the topics um, in each of the tactics that will be presented. The program eligibility, um, the fiscal health program is specifically designed for Ryan White grantees, including Part A and Part B subgrantees, um, including uh, Part C early intervention services grantees and their subgrantees, as well as Part D grantees and subgrantees. On a national level, um, the fiscal health program uh, utilizes a series of webinars and a resource center in order to um, deliver technical assistance um, to Ryan White communities. Uh, the Fiscal Health Resource Center and the online learning community really is designed to facilitate learning of HIV TA resources um, with and through the Target Center. All of our resources are made available through the Target Center as well. Um, this, this, this national tier focus also increases the self-guided learning um, through easy access to HIV TA materials, and it encourages collaboration among directly and indirectly funded Ryan White providers. Webinar topics um, range um, in, in it have broad applicability. Um, to uh, wide audiences. The topics in the past have included the impact of ACA um, and Medicaid and Medicare on Ryan White services, fundamentals of establishing a billing system, income diversification and planning for program sustainability, as well as tracking program income. It is important to keep in mind that while we are demonstrating to you some of the topic areas we actually encourage um, the project officers to relay uh, topics to us that would be um, important for us to disseminate on a wide um, scale through a webinar-based um, series. As 
And um, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to our program manager of fiscal health, uh, Julio Fonseca, who will talk to you about our regional tier training. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Thank you for joining us today. Um, briefly, uh, we're going to cover the regional tier. And what these look like is these are three actual on-site regional trainings that happen per year um, for each of the three years of the, uh, of the program. Um, they are on-site and in-person. Um, we go through a very um, close process of developing the agenda with th those involved in the site and also their project officer involvement. And um, they are typically two day, one to two day trainings that are on site and in person that feature not only the um, presentations and TA content, but also have an opportunity for facilitated small group breakout sessions so that individuals who have very specific needs and questions have the opportunity to address those. Here are, and we will cover in, in a bit more detail in a few more slides, uh, some additional content areas, but these are training topics that have been included in the past for the on-site uh, regional meetings. This is, slide is for your reference to show uh, what, where we had uh, conducted the regional meetings um, throughout the last uh, three-year grant cycle. So we work very closely with the key stakeholders when um, we initiate the planning process. Uh, typically, the project officer for the site is involved in every step of correspondence. And as you'll see later, when we have a registration link for people to actually request uh, the on-site regional meeting, that we ask them if they've been in touch with their uh, project officers regarding their needs and also have them provide information there so that we can have them very much involved in the planning process. We coordinate after um, to determine, you know, with HRSA to review and assess the needs of the site and determine if we will be going to do an, a regional on-site, who additional who we should additionally reach out to, and then we coordinate with um, an ex expert consultants to design the program and agenda for the meeting. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Carmelita Whitfield, who is also a program manager for the Fiscal Health. Thank you, Julio. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Carmelita Whitfield. I am the training coordinator for Fiscal Health as well. And just basically, if you have any regional training work request, I just ask that you um, either call me on the phone or um, my email address is right there. I also want to turn your attention to the uh, inverted triangle again and looking at the local tier. Um, basically, what I want to express here is that although we do offer the individualized TA, not all TA needs to be in-house. We do have a plethora of um, pre-existing webinars on our website, and I encourage each of you to uh, view the category of webinars that we have available to you. However, um, that being said, we do continue to offer, um, if you need us, to um, come to your office and do um, individualized TA or send one of our professional consultants. All right, I'm going to turn this back over to Michael Schenkel. Thank you very much for your time. One moment, please. I think one of the important things for us to highlight in all of our uh, tiered approach and all the tactics that we utilize is that the tactics um, and the programs are individualized by either the jurisdiction um, or the local uh, Ryan White grantee or subgrantee um, upon our communication with them. Um, and these are, again, some of the content areas that we have covered in the past. I would encourage you to submit um, your, um, if you have other content areas, uh, to submit those to um, Helen Revito, who is our project officer um, on this particular project. Um, some of the content areas that we have done, again, are, are the impact of ACA, 
Medicaid and Medicare on uh, Ryan White, uh, on the Ryan White Care provision, uh, marketing program services to insurance payers and to Medicaid programs. Um, as the ACA uh, begins to roll out and diversifying funding, um, a diversification of funding can occur through third-party reimbursement um, to Ryan White uh, providers. Uh, program and fiscal monitoring standards, as well as quality management um, content areas are also uh, covered, um, insurance coverage and program income. Uh, we also address systems development uh, to improve reimbursement and uh, service delivery uh, within the jurisdictions. Um, we have also um, worked with Ryan White providers to assist them in transitioning to a more comprehensive medical billing system if they have one in place or to implement a medical billing system within their current practice. Um, we also um, have worked in developing sliding scale fees um, for providers and determining client eligibility uh, for those scales um, as well as income verification and eligibility requirements. Uh, program income, as you um, all are aware, has been a, a big topic lately, as of late, on how program income is tracked um, within um, organizations, and that is one of the technical uh, assistance areas that we do provide to organizations, uh, is tracking program income. And additionally, um, um, increasing the skill levels uh, of uh, organizations, um, including the use of fundamentals of fiscal management in an ACA environment, um, implementing uh, stronger fiscal management and accountability standards for nonprofit budgeting, um, developing an indirect cost rate and negotiating that rate, um, and as well as preparing um, for uh, program audits um, as well. And these are just, again, some of the the broad topics that are covered, um, our, our topic areas are very adaptable um, per the local um, climate. Um, and I do want to um, ask Julio if he would give us an example of, uh, walk through an example of some individual TA that was provided uh, to a provider. So um, we do offer, as Michael had said, uh, tech additional technical support for uh, those that have been in attendance at the regional trainings. And this is an example of a, um, a site or provider that attended at the Tennessee and Arkansas regional training, um, was on site, had spoken with one of the presenters and request, submitted a request for additional support on strategic planning, fiscal sustainability, and sliding fee scale. Uh, the objectives for uh, this organization was to assess their strengths and weaknesses, their fiscal strengths and weaknesses, and to look at their past business plan and develop a strategy to expand upon it, which or propose a new business model determining what, what uh, based upon what the assessment review uh, showed, and then to ex assist the executive director in conducting a needs analysis. There were a number of proposed actions that uh, were also drafted for them to take as a next step. And the outcome was that they were successfully co connected to another organization for peer-to-peer -peer, uh, support and networking uh, to help uh, replicate a successful business model that had been implemented elsewhere for very similar work that they were doing. They were also given detailed input on how to develop the sliding fee scale and were given guidance on uh, developing their strategic plan and furthering that along. Um, we know this because we uh, went back to the uh, TA requester and conducted a follow-up evaluation and interview after 90 days of their receiving their technical assistance just to sort of glean and gather additional information on um, the support that they and training that they received. Which leads us into uh, the evaluation of our program. All of our programs are evaluated not only for satisfaction, um, but also uh, for knowledge attainment and skill development. 
Um, the, as Julio had indicated, we do evaluate um, our services immediately following um, um, an activity and then again at 60 and 90 days. And what we're really looking to do is to assess knowledge transfer into practice. Has the knowledge that um, individuals gain through our training, has that been placed into practice? And how has the fiscal systems um, and monitoring standards changed um, as a result of that uh, training? Um, again, uh, the evaluation um, allows us to uh, conduct a continuous program quality improvement and to identify other TA needs and resources that may be uh, already available during the via the target center or through um, our previous fiscal health um, offerings or to identify the need to develop additional materials um, as well. Um, our next site, our next uh, slide here really does show some of uh, the resources that have been developed uh, for the program. Um, there, there are two that are listed here. One is the uh, top 10 federal grant compliance pitfalls, which is a small fact sheet um, that individuals can have death side, um, as well as a um, uh, a manual that was put together last year successful, successfully managing fiscally healthy HIV nonprofits, um, which, can, which is a fairly large publication um, of about uh, 30 to 40 pages, which provides checklists, uh, tips, various worksheets uh, to really increase the fiscal sustainability um, of organizations. And those are also available on our website and just a highlight of some of the programs that we offer uh, there as well. Other programs, um, other uh, publications that are available include um, maximizing third-party reimbursement as well as um, connecting um, and marketing services uh, to Medicaid managed care programs. Um, initiating a TA request can happen um, in two ways. Um, first, the HAB project officer um, can relay the TA needs to our fiscal project officer, um, and then we will communicate with uh, Ms. Rovito um, regarding uh, that request. Or the Ryan White grantee and subgrantee um, can contact Health HIV's fiscal health team I have included a, um, a URL um, there which shows um, a link to a fiscal health um, technical assistance um, form to allow individuals to submit requests online to us, or they may email Julio Fonseca at healthhiv.org, um, or feel free to call um, and talk with him about the particular TA need. Uh, that happens within the jurisdiction. Um, what happens from that point is that regardless of how the request comes to us, Health HIV engages the requesting jurisdictions um, have project officer um, to really understand the jurisdictional need from a project officer perspective. Um, and then we coordinate a joint call with the requesting jurisdiction and the project officers. Health HIV then puts together an action plan based on um, the conversations and the TA needs identified. And um, those, those uh, action plans are reviewed with the project officer um, and approvals are requested uh, for those proposed action plans. Throughout the process, Health HIV uh, provides the project officers with status updates on the progress of the um, engagement and the, T and the TA delivery, um, and also identifies additional topics that may be uh, required um, for the grantee to maximize um, the, the TA process that, that they're receiving. Um, our HAB project officer um, is Helen Rovino. 
Um, I have uh, placed her telephone number and email address there for you. Uh, please feel free to reach out to her if you have questions regarding uh, the fiscal health program or have a particular TA request um, that, um, that you have or would like to see addressed. Um, again, I would love to um, have um, your involvement as project officers in helping to identify additional content areas that you feel uh, would be impactful for your grantees uh, to have regarding fiscal health issues. Um, and um, I wanted to also just put a list of our program staff available to you um, please feel free to reach out to us and email us about um, the fiscal health program or about your individual TA needs. We're happy to talk with you uh, about those and to develop a tailored program uh, for um, your particular jurisdictions. Well, that's the end of our, our presentation today, um, but I wanted to open the lines up um, that if any individuals have a particular question that they would like to um, that they would like to ask, um, I would encourage you to either raise your hand um, in the WebEx um, platform or to type the response in the chat field um, below on the right side of your screen. With um, no questions um, being asked at this time, um, I would like to um, thank you for participating in our webinar today. Um, if you do have additional questions that arise, uh, please feel free to, uh, again, contact us, um, and we'll be happy to answer those questions for you. Um, this webinar has been recorded and will also be available uh, to you recently. We do have one question that is coming in now, and I will open the line to Renata Thompson. Renata, are you there? Hi, I'm sorry. Uh, this is Renata. I'm sorry I had my phone on mute. Um, and I was trying to type quickly to get it in before you close the session. And forgive me if you've already covered this, but I had a little trouble um, logging in. But how long between the time that you request um, you know, a TA session or assistance um, and the grantee or grantees actually receiving it? A great question. Um, and, and I would say that, that that timeline varies based on mm -hmm. the, the grantee's need um, and their ability to really address the TA topic um, at a particular time. Typically, mm -hmm. when we conduct individualized TAs with organizations, uh, we like to um, have that TA finished within 30 days. That's our goal, to have that uh, delivered. Okay. Now, okay. understandably, some of the TA requests can be quite large <laughs> yeah, um, and yes. quite lengthy, um, so they do get extended um, over a period of time. Okay. Okay. May I ask another question? Unless there's another, uh, you receive Please. another question. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, I'm sorry, my mind just, um, I just lost the question. It had to do with. Um, oh, here it is. Is what can we do as far as POs, as far as giving you as much information as possible about the grantee to make sure that the need that they have um, is is adequately met. Do you have, you know, a, a form or something that we need to submit? Uh, but again, I'm just thinking, what can we do as POs to make sure that we provide you with as much information about the grantee as possible so that the actual session um, uh, will be um, more effective, I guess? 
Another great question. We um, we usually um, once we we get a request, um, we will initiate um, that uh, in depth interview with the oh, project I officer um, okay. to really to really get down to the nitty gritty of the the problem that the project officer uh, perceives um, to be the challenge at hand. Um, mm -hmm. We usually do ask um, for um, we we usually ask the grantee um, if they would supply us with their uh, current application or any technical reviews that they have had um, completed, okay. um, and we usually gather that from them um, as well. But uh, and then once that is reviewed, we will have that joint call um, okay. with both the project officer and the site. Sometimes the site does not um does not um they identify one problem but mm -hmm. it may act not actually be that particular challenge um that they need to deal with first. So we help to direct um that action plan to cover those items um in okay. in concert with uh the project officers. Okay. Very good. I have no further questions, and I just want to say I'm very excited about this, and I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Ter terrific. Thank you, Renata. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions um, at this time? Having no other questions in the queue, um, I again would like to thank you for participating. Um, as an organization and as Health HIV uh, providing um, fiscal health services and technical assistance to HRSA HAB for um, going on now our fourth cycle, we'd like to thank you um, for this opportunity to continue to work with you and uh, truly value um, and see this as a cooperative agreement. So please feel free to reach out to us. Um, to um, to inform us of topics um, and of um, areas that your TA that your grantees uh, need TA. So thank you very much for your time. Um, and again, this webinar will be recorded um, and will be distributed um, through um, the web through the um, email through Helen Revito. Thanks so much.